Can your devices make your scoliosis worse? Many patients have questions regarding technology and devices and how they could affect the spine. And especially, this is especially true with somebody with scoliosis. Technology has led to some really some amazing advancements in, in treatment and medical diagnosis and actually just a very treatment of scoliosis itself. But like with most things, um, things have pros. There's, there's pros associated with technology and there's also some cons. And when you look at these devices, it's not really the devices themselves that are causing scoliosis to progress. It's actually the way they're used. And this all has to do with something called ergonomics. This concept of ergonomics is particularly important when it comes to conservative chiropractic centered approaches because we're trying to realign the spine without using a surgery, rods and screws. And we're using more than a more natural way and trying to get the body to help straighten out the spine and make the spine and scoliosis smaller. Ergonomics refers to how we use our devices in time and in space and in body position and in posture and what we're doing every single day and how we're working and how we're living our lives, something we call our daily life or daily living is in terms of what we're doing there. And for example, constantly looking down at your phone can lead to something called forward head posture. Forward head posture, unfortunately, is becoming a very common position. And it's a perfect example of how these devices can lead to straightening or straining the spine by introducing adverse spinal tension, which is an abnormal, natural position to be in for a long period of time. Forward head posture is caused by people looking down at their phone or other devices for, ex for long periods of time. Ideally, people should be keeping their spine in a straight, more neutral position, means this means looking more straight ahead and not down at their devices. Forward head posture ha can affect the cervical spine in particularly. This can lead to a loss of the normal neck, the neck curve or the healthy curve of the neck, which can cause the neck, which can cause neck, shoulder pain, tension, headaches, can cause tightness in the shoulders and can lead to multiple other symptoms. A, a forward shift in posture in the head relative to the shoulder, as small as about one inch, can increase the, what the head physically weighs by leverage by approximately 10 pounds. And one inch is not a lot. In fact, we see lots of patients that can have two, three, four inches. They're increasing 40 pounds of leverage to their cervical, to their shoulders and upper thoracic spine. The neck has to support the weight of the head and the bridge between, these, the, between the brain and the body is the cervical spine. And we know there's very important spinal cord nerves and nerves that transmit to the rest of the body. So once you affect the neck, you can affect the, really the function of the entire spine. Now, how, the ergo, how does ergonomics affect people with scoliosis? Well, we know scoliosis is an unnatural sideways spinal curvature that also rotates. And when you have this type of misalignment, it can be exacerbated by any other types of misalignments. And we know the condition itself already introduces adverse spinal tension and uneven forces to the body. As a structural spinal condition, we know people with scoliosis have to be very aware of what's happening to their spine and not really introducing any additional uneven forces, which can maybe lead to the pro scoliosis progression over time or exacerbate scoliosis progression. Very often when we see curves occurring in the spine from the front, we see loss of normal side views of the spine. So when patients can affect the side view of the spine in a negative way, we believe this can exacerbate the front curves to become larger. So therefore scoliosis can have a very, can be impacted by the overall spinal strength, health and function. Part of scoliosis treatment is not really just helping the spine move straighter this way, but it's also involved in help realigning the spine from the side. So chronic poor posture over time, strain to uh, strain to the spine by, by leading to more forward head posture or by constantly looking down or bad ergonomics can cause the spine to become more tilted and more rotated, which can lead to more scoliosis progression. So therefore, how should people use these devices so therefore they're not exacerbating their scoliosis? The first thing, if you're using your phone, you should not be holding it down at your waist. You should be holding it higher up at your chest level. So you're looking straight or you're just tilting your eyes a little bit down, not actually tilting your skull. You should use your hands to hold your phone high and not kind of like leave it down looking on a, on a table or, or holding it low. We shouldn't use your neck to try to balance your phone. Like a lot of people walk around with their phone in between their neck and their shoulder and they're kind of torqued and tilt. You should be holding your, your phone, not, not propping it between your neck and shoulders, which can lead to more more issues. If you're texting a lot, you shouldn't be really texting long messages on small devices. You should be using like a computer and keyboard and looking straight ahead. So therefore you're not keeping your neck in this flex position, which can cause more issues. When you're reading on a tablet, the ideal thing is that you put it in a stand so where it's sitting 
at your eye level and you don't have to look down as much. And if, if patients actually practice good posture while using these devices, we still recommend that they take breaks, take breaks because some people can sit on these devices for hours and hours and hours at a time and they're developing like this. And since scoliosis tends to affect children and children growing up in this flexed position, constantly looking down, their spine is developing in this position, which makes it much more difficult to, to intervene and to reduce because it's actually happening during growth. So therefore, this whole consideration is also important when we look at what devices do additionally. Most people who sit behind devices for a long time don't move, I meaning they sit there just for long periods of time, and this lack of motion can be very serious to the spinal health. The spine by self by, by, by design, it's designed to move. And the fact, the more you move your spine, normally the better it functions because of the discs and the ligaments and the tissues surrounding the spine actually respond and become healthier by the more you move them. The sedentary nature of using uh, screens for long periods of time is completely opposite of what your spine needs. Your spine needs regular activity, it needs movement, it needs, it needs to be functional. The more you sit, the less hydrated your discs become, the less healthy your discs become, and the more stiff your spine becomes. The stiffer your spine becomes with scoliosis, the harder your spine is to actually reduce because the spine has to become stiffer, the curves become stronger, and they're actually harder to reduce, especially in a conservative approach. So therefore, when it comes to technology and scoliosis, especially in this modern age, we like to prepare patients to use these things in moderation. And when they are using them to take frequent break, breaks, to move around, to stretch, to engage with, with the life around them. And we also recommend to be as ergonomically as possible, to be in as a neutral position as possible. Neutral meaning looking straight ahead, not flex forward in the upper back or in the neck, and not sitting there for long periods of time. The best thing a patient can do with scoliosis is take breaks from these to, to these uh, devices and actually you do some of their scoliosis exercises if they were prescribed any by their physician. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.